All right, I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. This is a regular meeting of the third Laguna Hills Mutual Board of Directors, a California nonprofit mutual benefit corporation. It is now 9.30 in the morning, Tuesday, December 21st, and we have a quorum. We have nine board members here in the uh, boardroom. I'm sorry, nine directors here in the board boardroom, and two directors are on Zoom. So we have a full... All of our directors are available. All right, Director Wayne, if you would uh, please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would all stand and face the flag with me, please, and follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All righty, we'll acknowledge that the media is present, and uh, I'll ask for approval of the agenda. If I can get a motion to approve the agenda. I so move. I, uh, Director McCarry moves. Can I get a second? Director Engdahl seconds. Any additions or corrections regarding uh, Director Laws? Uh, I'd request that we move uh, item 11E to 13B. 11E is the uh, committee update appointments. Committee update? Yeah, just okay. to discuss those a little more. Yeah, sure we can. We can move that. Thank you. All right, so we'll, all right, 11E will now become uh, 13B, correct? All right. Any other adjustments or corrections related to the agenda? Hearing none, I'll then oh. assume, I'll assume by consent. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, in the agenda prep, we didn't. We said that we needed to correct item 11 D one and two. Both of those should read recommend to approve variance on both D one and D two. It didn't get changed in the prep it, meeting. It says on D recommend from the architectural controls and standards is D. It doesn't say what we recommended. We, we recommended approval. Well, okay, yeah, you're right. The other so item. Recommend approval. Okay. All right. Anything else? Hearing no other changes, uh, I'll assume then by consent that with those two changes, we have an approved agenda. Okay. Uh, approval of minutes. Let's take, we'll take all three as one, unless we have some issues. Uh, can I get a motion to approve all three sets of minutes? Director Wayne moves, a second. Director Engdahl seconds. Any additions, corrections, or changes regarding any of those minutes? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll then go ahead and assume again by consent that the minutes as stipulated are approved. Thank you. All right, chair remarks. First thing is, I would like to congratulate Siobhan Foster in our selection as a general manager and CEO to take the place of Jeff Parker beginning February 4th. We're very pleased, Siobhan, to have you in that role and look forward to working with you. So thank you. All right. I also want to remind everyone that tomorrow you'll receive an email, part two of call on Trash Talk which will answer more of your questions about changes coming to Third Mutual beginning January 1. Also tomorrow, from 3 to 5 in Clubhouse 2, the Sequoia Ballroom, Third Mutual will be hosting a town hall with the sole subject, trash, as the topic for the day. I will be joined by Director Mark Laws, and uh, the two of us will be there. We will do a short introduction on the... Uh, to try to update you on where we are with the issue of the changes that'll take place January 1. And then we will uh, have uh, open time for questions uh, regarding the trash issue and try to answer as many as we can. I'm not sure that we'll necessarily have all of the answers and some things are still in a state of flux, but uh, we will try to answer as many as possible and then get back to you with uh, the more general answers that'll probably follow in that uh, Wednesday email. So hopefully we'll see many of you tomorrow afternoon from 3 to 5 in Clubhouse 2, uh, specifically for uh, a trash talk. Thank you. All right. Rosemary DiLorenzo, update from uh, the VMS board, if you would, please. Good morning, President. And the third 
board and also um, our third resident and to staff. Um, this month has been a very busy month for VMS. We had um, three new directors put on VMS. One from, well, one isn't new, from each of the boards. We had Leiling Isaacs put on the board and she is from, uh, excuse me, selected to be on the board and she is with GRF. We had Manny Robledo uh, selected by United and he's now on BMS. And third was wonderful enough to reappoint Wei Ming Tao um, for another three year term. We also selected officers for BMS. I'm happy to announce that I'm the chair again and Wei Ming is the first vice chair and um, the second vice chair is Diane Feltz. So um, we work very well together. So we're excited about uh, the coming year. Um, today at three o'clock, we're going to meet and it's called a workshop uh, with the VMS board to discuss our goals <clears throat> for next year and also to re, um, restate what we want our CEO to be doing for us. Um, Robert already talked about it briefly, but um, we, we, the VMS board, totally followed the bylaws, and uh, it, was, it wasn't an easy chore, and we um, unanimously approved of Siobhan, but that didn't matter, because we had to present Siobhan as a candidate to all three of the boards, and she had to get a minimum of 22 votes, and she got an overwhelming amount of votes, so she got more than 22 that was required. And I'm very happy, so you already applauded about it, but we're very happy and we look forward to working with her. She has with us, and I've worked with her since she started because I was president of third when she first started. She has a very a proven ability to improve systems. And she, we, we wanna have anything up there? Or are we just gonna have that one page? I didn't notice. Uh, and she works very well. The one thing is that she works all the time, which is fabulous. So if you send her something in the middle of the night or you send her something on the weekend, she she gets back to you. So that's an incredible thing because that's one of our goals. And she is going to totally, I'm not going to read every word, uh, she's really going to focus on working with staff and with the management team and with the boards to improve our service because that is what we are. We're a service business. Uh, we also hired... Um, and correct me if I'm I'm wrong. The uh, general services director, and he's replacing Chris Lagenauer. And boy, he's going to come in an exciting time in the middle of the trash movement. Um, and he is get going to start on January 17th. You know what we do, uh, and I think it's fabulous when we hire a new department head. Uh, the person is interviewed by an interview panel, and the panel includes members from each of the boards. So we were all part of this process. And, and that's really good because we work really closely together. So we're excited about him joining us. I'm not saying his name, I guess. Uh, we also hired a new corporate secretary, but, um, and that person should be starting on January 3rd. And in the meanwhile, we thank you, Grant. You are absolutely incredible. So we appreciate all that you do for us. Um, the MNC department also was restructured. We have uh, a new department head there, and Manny, who's Gomez, and he has is really focused on improving the, the service of MNC. MNC has so many different components, and uh, we're going to work very closely with him. But he has reorganized it, and we want to really improve a t more timely response. We have to. Um, improve a lot of areas. And I know that he'll be working closely and they'll be working closely with the boards and the MNC departments. And um, we also had our key performance indicators completed this month. And they had to do with the turnover of paperwork in um, purchasing of units. And you know, from all of you, and you'll see that when the financial report is done, sales are really up in the community. And it is so much more paperwork. And one of the things, what are you trying to get him to move the slides? I know, and the slides are so well done, too bad. Um, but we're really focusing on, on customer service in that area. And one of the things that was happening is 
when the paperwork came in, lots of times it was incomplete and we would, it would just sit there while you were waiting to get to it. Now the paperwork is checked as soon as it comes in and we're going to evaluate it within the next month as to how this is, how this is going. Um, we had 174 more escrow packages in 2001 compared to 2019. We didn't compare it to 2020. So um, that's a lot more work and great for us because the units keep selling. Um, the last thing that I'll talk about is the all boards training. And uh, it was absolutely incredible. The information that was given by Jeff Beaumont was absolutely wonderful. And the department heads did an incredible job. And you can find this training because we promised that this training, which was put together by the VMS team and Jeff Beaumont, was going to be available for the residents to see. And it's also available to all new board members. And you go, and it's, the instructions are there. You go to your YouTube, you go to the library, and you find the VMS board member training on the first row to the right. And if you have any trouble finding it, let me know, because I'll ask Siobhan. What can I say? And the last thing is, is if you ever have any questions or any needs, feel free to contact the VMS board. And I wish you, or your board representatives, or your board, I wish you all a very happy holiday, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Rosemary. Appreciate that update. A lot of valuable information. Okay, well, we'll move now to uh, member comments. And Grant, each person has three minutes in which they can speak, and they may address items that are not on the agenda at this time. We'll take people in the audience first, and then if we have email comments, we'll take them second. The first speaker is Joe Camara at 2404. Good morning. I'd like to reference the property risk analysis report from a year ago by Beecher Carlson Insurance Services. It was produced by industry experts with the latest analysis tools and peer reviewed. It clearly concludes that Laguna Woods should be making insurance decisions by GRF and not by the individual mutuals. Also, that the absolute maximum coverage should be no more than $150 million. For each board member that voted to increase our HOA for 2022, I would like to know, did you read this report and do you feel you understood it? Board members are trusted to make informed, fact-based decisions and certainly not try to bully the owners of this community with statements like, do what we say or we will raise your HOA by $93 per man or per month. The right action at this point is to make a motion directing the staff to cancel the unnecessary redundant property insurance held by the third mutual and make no increase to the 2022 HOA assessment. Thank you, as I look forward to the response of each board member. Next speaker is Jules Zaylon from 3124A. Good morning. We recently conducted two separate ballot initiatives seeking to amend our CCNRs. That expensive, error-prone, no-mess vote that sought to entirely rewrite all the CCNR documents, or the more recent attempt to rewrite just the insurance provision. It's common knowledge that I strongly oppose the board's no-mess vote. In fact, I even threatened litigation if that horrible initiative passed, but it didn't. My recent Globe letter only re-emphasized my hostility to that horrendous CCNR rewrite, adding, thank goodness it failed. It's also common knowledge that I strongly supported the insurance amendment. Entirely on my own, I produced 
and hammered into lawns all over town more than 50 handmade signs. Most of you have seen my signs and my car and scooter parked by gate seven and eight, festooned with a vote yes sign. I really knocked myself out urging that vote yes. Yet our board president just wrote an email claiming that I changed my position and was now against the initiative lowering insurance costs. And he urges no one should believe anything that I say. He just accused me of being dishonest, two-faced. Now ask yourself, why would I oppose the ballot initiative that would save me $1,200 a year when I spent over 60 hours working to pass? Illogical, right? It's so illogical, I immediately wrote him and asked him to correct what he said and promised that if he did, I would do nothing more. I wouldn't say another word. Instead, he came out swinging. So why make a cockeyed accusation? Maybe because I just began collecting signatures on a recall petition to fire him. He apparently can think of no other way to defend himself except to throw mud at me. One reason for recalling him is that he keeps saying things that are provably false. I guess we can now add his accusation that I was against the ballot initiative I at all times was in favor of. Character is said to be destiny. This village, this neighborhood, this beautiful community is too precious to give over to somebody like that. This guy has shown us his true colors. We should show him the door. I'll be outside the community center until noon today, handing out and collecting recall petitions. Come join our campaign. Thank you. Next speaker is Yong Pak at 3420. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You hear my name is Yong Pak, P A K. I'm sure we are all receive a 22 and packages, HOA packages. When I see these things, I was very sad and I was very disappointed. Well, the reason I come in, I, uh, Laguna, this is a, one of the best places in the world. And a couple of friends of mine recommended it, so I moved it. It was excuse, excuse me, Mr. Pack. Could you remove your mask? Because I'm having a lot of trouble understanding you. And maybe May I take it off? Yeah, please, okay. please. May I start yes. all over again? Yes, you can start okay, all over. Thank you. I'm sure you'll receive it, or we are all receiving 20, uh, 2022 HOA package of financial report. It will be over $100 increase. Well, soon as I receive that, wow, this is a, something is wrong. Reason why? Because when I moved in 2012, it was about 570 some. Uh, less than 10 years, so he moved to the. Well, I am very happy and proud of the moment, and now it is sad. Why? I was a retired faculty at Iowa State. My remit to fund, personally, that's the, one of the biggest challenges with you. You may be better than mine in your financial, but it's very difficult. It will be another five more years. Hopefully, I, my life will be longer. We could be $900,000. I don't know. My uh, social security, more other fund could be ran out. That's number one. Number two, last uh, il uh, election or a ballot between yes and no, it's a lot of people is confused. So it's a limited time. We need some little bit more campaign understanding in it, but a lot of them. My, uh, my language is English is second language. It's very difficult. So even I was in a faculty, but you know, my second language was not as good as you are. So that's my limit. And true and honestly, our fund is getting short. Basically, 
I guess, <laughs> move out of this location. But I hope not that that happens. Again, you may be better than my financial, but idea is, yes and no, it doesn't really matter. We elect you. You please understand these people. These people. And we are proud of you and happy about what you're doing. But at least uh, you look at these people, how unhappy face. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Pat. Next speaker is Chris Collins, 3306Q. Good morning. I'm Chris Collins, and I'm here to give you a little bit of an update on the work of the foundation here in Laguna Woods on behalf of um, the residents that live here. Uh, we provide experience, uh, we, exp we provide finances for people that are experiencing temporary financial crisis. Sometimes it's hard to envision how a donation can do this, but thank you notes that we have received this year underscore how donations benefit and change lives, particularly with the challenges created by the pandemic. Donations permit the foundation to help with medical bills, grocery cards, hearing aids, emergency response devices, dental care, electric and telephone costs, caregiver services, and other matters when residents face financial emergencies. Here are some of the comments from uh, recipients themselves. We're fortunate to have the foundation. All of your help caring for seniors deserves more than a thank you. The Stater Brothers gift cards put a smile on my face and a reminder of your caring and help. As the sole caregiver for my mom since the end of 2018, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks for the funds to pay for someone to be with my mom as I take care of necessary appointments. Thanks to your kindness, my husband was able to complete the treatment and now enjoys renewed eyesight. Thank you for extending the emergency response device coverage. Your generosity is very much appreciated since my finances are limited due to my husband's death and I am prone to falling. Thank you for helping us. You made it possible for my husband to attend the Alzheimer's daycare services on El Toro, which he enjoyed very much. So for more information about the foundation, please contact us at the foundation at comline.com or by telephone 949-268-2246. Also, please visit our website at foundationoflagunawoodsvillage.org to learn how the foundation lives up to its motto, which is Neighbors Helping Neighbors. Thank you. <coughs> The next one is Marilyn Handelman, read, being read by Susan Smallwood. Good morning. My neighbor, Marilyn Handelman, asked that I read this as she is going to be 95 in January. This is in response to the email received by Mr. Munchkin. Per your email, December 18th, perhaps if you had taken the time to read Joel's letter, or perhaps if you cared about the third mutual, you would understand he was talking about the first stupid vote you tried to push through without giving the residents an opportunity to read them and match with the old CCNRs. That vote was not about insurance. It was about changing the CCNRs. For some reason you seem to fail you are a for some reason you seem to feel you are a CEO who is so busy that you have to have a private secretary and a cell phone paid for by the residents. I would say this is a means of compensation, which is forbidden by Davis-Sterling Act. Perhaps you should read those two. 
My husband, Arnold, helped write them almost 40 years ago. They are to HOAs what the Constitution is to the USA. I would also suggest you realize this is a senior community. There are many residents who live on the Social Security base of 30 years ago. Raising the monthly dues by over $100, which includes paying for your secretary and cell phone, in some cases is going to make these residents choose between food and medications, or perhaps give up both. It will force others to move out of the community because you, your previous board, and your unscrupulous attorney have not done your fiduciary duty to keep this community safe and affordable. Thank you. Connie, do we have any um, email comments? Yes, I have one, uh, one member's email comment. Peter Stenstrom, Manor 40071A. I have been trying for several months to get my request for a reverse mortgage approved by our HOA in Laguna Woods. The loan is FHA insured, so I need the approval of our condo HOA. Please let me know what I can do to get my loan approved. I have not been able to contact anyone in the community to help me move forward. I am on a fixed income and need to access my equity in my condo. This is a common and safe mortgage program used to refinance condominium and home properties. I paid the cost of the insurance premium and there will be no cost to the third mutual HOA. I have already paid for the appraisal and the required FHA counseling. The only thing I need is your approval to move forward. Thank you for your considerations of this request. This concludes the member's email comment. The next speaker is Susan Smallwood, 3456B. Good morning. I noted in the minutes of November 16th that my comment about the falsification of the resignation of Pearlstone was left out. Director Munchnik, first you fabricate the resignation of Pearlstone, and we learned it to be false. Even both Wayne and Stozak asked if it was legal, and you said yes. You have discredited yourself and your board of six to go along to get along. In response to your email about Jules' letter to the editor, again, you fabricate the intent of Jules' letter to the editor and make it up to fit your need to discredit him. But you only have discredited you and your board of six so that they will continue to go along to get along. And at the end of your email, you said, it would be nice if we could put this issue behind us and work cooperatively as a community moving forward. I don't understand that. You put somebody down and yet you want to work with the community. It doesn't make sense. It appears this comes from your private email and this was meant as a private e-blast. But yet at the bottom, you show a copyright of 2021, support your third board. And at the mailing address you have, support your third board, with this address here on El Toro. Which is it? Thank you.
That concludes our um, session of speakers. That's the end of member comments. Okay. In response to the first member comment uh, about uh, the insurance issue and the uh, the study, anybody want to make a comment about that? Hearing none, I guess I'll respond to it. Uh, you're correct. The PML in the study is 141 million dollars. Uh, the problem is, though, that GRF cannot purchase insurance for Third Mutual. It'd be one thing if we shared insurance and we purchased insurance cooperatively with GRF, but GRF is not in a position to purchase insurance on behalf of Third Mutual. And the $225 million that GRF has does cover all of their amenities that they're responsible for. So that's why $225 million is an acceptable figure for them. The $141 million, that's the PML, you're also correct, the chances of uh, the occurrence of something greater than the $141 million is relatively slim. That's correct. I give you that. However, the PML is only one item that goes into the calculation of what the insurance should be. In addition, there are the governing documents that we have to adhere to, as well as what the lenders will support in this process. So just looking at the PML by itself is, in my opinion, not sufficient. All right, as for Jules's comments, uh, Jules, I certainly respect your right to share your feelings the way that you do and to stand outside in front of the community center until 12 noon today collecting signatures on a petition. And I will be responding to uh, your petition and the claims you make in your petition under another venue. All right, Mr. Pack, in terms of the issue of the HOA fee, please understand, we do understand that there are a large number of people who are on fixed incomes. We understand that. And the board wishes that it didn't have to raise the HOA fee the way it did. But with all the costs going up, inflation going up, everything going up, it was inevitable that we would have to raise the fees. Uh, anybody else want to address that issue? Donna, our finance chair. Yes. Yeah. yeah, as chair of the finance committee, it's painful for all of us. And it's understandable that there's great concern, as there is on our part as well. The insurance, as you know, was a big part of what happened. Uh, having to do with what we must do based upon our governing documents and what lenders will support, which is also important. But as President Munchnick pointed out, salaries are going up, services are going up in cost, utility costs are going up, as you will see in the financial report soon. And this year, we have an unprecedented 6.8% annual inflation rate in this country, which hasn't been seen since 1982. That's why when you go to the gas station, the gas price is higher than it's been in, in years. That's why this year Thanksgiving dinner, if it was purchased the same exact things as the year before, was up 14% according to um, reports. And so it's not something we took lightly. It's not something we do take lightly. It affects all of us. And what I do hope you will appreciate and be able to see if you stay to the end of the meeting, we do have cost savings initiatives that are at least offsetting some of our costs, maintaining our community in its high standard, and yet at the same time, saving costs in other areas wherever we can. And those are highlighted at the end of the finance report. So thank you. And I, I don't know if this helps, but I hope so. Thank you, Director Sosa and Sosak. I wanted to also respond um, for what Director Sosek just expressed, but also for the listening audience out there, um, I can appreciate your concern and your, your maybe conflicting feelings, but understand we as board members, we live here as well. 
and the HO, the increase in whatever fees, we have to pay that as well. So when we are making decisions about the uh, HOA dues, when we're making decisions about the insurance, um, contrary to what uh, Jules has said, um, I do not go along to get along. I was not elected to this board, and I'm not serving to be friends with the board for the purpose of being on the board. So I just want to make it very clear that I am not going along to get along. I take my position on this board very seriously, and I want you to know that. So every decision that I make, every vote that I vote on, it is not to get along. I am voting my consciousness, and I am doing my fiduciary responsibility. So I just want you to know that every board meeting, I show up ready to do my work and not to make anyone ticked off, not to make anyone's life miserable, but to do and to vote my consciousness. Thank you. Well, I would just like to uh, address a different part of uh, Mr. Peck's concerns and uh, with regards to um, education and transparency of all the things that uh, the board is going to ask of the uh, ownership to sign off on, um, whether it be a CCNR change, insurance change. Um, I believe that moving forward, uh, we all hope that uh, we can educate the community more and hopefully uh, more of our highly educated um, qualified residents can step up and be on committees to help uh, this community move forward in the right direction and uh, uh, help steer um, us away from uh, rocky, rocky shores, if you will. And uh, all in all, um, the more people that participate, the better this community is gonna be because we'll have better communication between all of us. So hopefully you'll see that in the future. All right, thank you. Uh, Marilyn Handelman, as read by Susan Smallwood, uh, I responded to her email. Uh, this, this was her initial email, and I responded to it. I just want to clarify for everybody's understanding, those here in the boardroom, as well as those who may be listening at home, there never was any intent for me to have a private secretary. I do not have a private <laughs> secretary, and we were never voting on whether or not I should. That was never the issue. The issue was whether or not the third board felt that an additional secretary was necessary to do some of the work that has been handled by the current, uh, well, we now have a new corporate secretary, but was being handled by the corporate secretary that was just too much to get done in a regular work day. And that's why we were looking at an additional corporate secretary. It was never, ever intended to be for me. And also the rest of uh, Ms. Handelman's uh, issue, I responded to her email. Uh, Mr. Uh, Peter uh, Sandstrom, reverse mortgage. Uh, Jeff or Siobhan, do you want to address that? Yes, sir. Um, we will be um, working with our, our team to address his question. I don't know the specifics of it, but we'll get into it real quickly right after the meeting and respond to him directly. Excuse me? Microphone. Oh, my microphone is on. Yeah. Mask is too. Oh, your mask. You Ms. Smallwood, I respectfully disagree with much of what you had to say today. I'm not going to use this forum to respond to some of your accusations and innuendos at this time. And that ends our members' comments. And we will move on to uh, the CEO and COO report, please. To the president, members of the audience, uh, good morning. Uh, two, two quick things on COVID that I wanted to indicate was uh, we have, um, as, as you know, or probably have heard, um, the uh, Department of Health Services um, for the state of California, along with the governor, has instituted a um, 
guidance with regards to face coverings and requirement for in public spaces where people are engaged with employees or coming into an area. Um, the requirement is now for them to wear masks. As you can see, people are um, abiding by that and appreciate that. That is from December 15th to January 15th. The purpose of that was be, um, to try to um, keep the numbers down as low as possible during the holiday season. The um, Omicron um, variant has certainly spiked up in um, California now as well as the United States. Um, so it is a precautionary activity by the state to require the mask wearing. Um, with regards to COVID numbers in Laguna Woods, and this is for the whole community of Laguna Woods, we've seen an increase from 575 to 590 cases. So that's 15 cases in the last two weeks. Um, luckily for us, there has not been any additional deaths reported for our area. So that's um, something positive to look at. With regards to the hospitalizations and ICUs, one of the things that we look at and track pretty regularly that has sta continues to stabilize uh, 195 hospitalizations and 56 ICU. So it hasn't gone down, but it hasn't gone back up. So um, that's a good thing. Um, I wanted to um, just follow up on the comment that was made by our president that we have um, um, a general services director that's going to be starting on the January 17th. So we're pleased to have that. And we also have made offers and getting um, forward to looking for corporate secretary beginning in January as well. And with that, I will turn it over to Siobhan. Thank you, Jeff. Honorable President, members of the board, I have a few quick announcements this morning for you. Uh, first of all, the village decorating contest sponsored by the Recreation and Special Events Department is underway. If you're interested in taking part, please share a photo of your manor's decorations by no later than noon tomorrow. Those photos can be emailed to recreationvms at gmail.com. The department will then share those photos on Facebook. Your neighbors will vote on the best decorated manners, and you could be the winner of tickets to the Village New Year's event at the Performing Arts Center. Christmas tree recycling will again be offered by the Landscape Department. They will pick up Christmas trees on December 30th, January 4th, and January 7th. Please call Resident Services at 949-597-4600. 48 hours prior to setting your tree out by the curb. As you know, the discarded trees are ground into mulch and used throughout the community. A quick update on Christmas holidays hours uh, in our key areas. Resident Services Call Center will be open for telephone calls from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Thursday, December 23rd and Friday, December 24th. They will not be taking walk-ins, however. So please call if you have needs on Thursday and Friday. The service center will be closed on December 25th. In terms of transportation services, there will be no services offered on December 25th, and there will be no fixed route service on Thursday, the December 23rd and Friday, December 24th. However, holiday demand service will be available from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the 23rd and the 24th. The journey program will also run from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on these days, and the boost program will run on these days as well. You can call transportation at 949-597-4659 to schedule service, or you can use your Lyft app to schedule your boost program rides. The complete schedule of holiday hours is available on our website. And finally, new resident orientations are being scheduled for the new year. New residents are encouraged to attend one of these sessions to learn about Third Mutual and to meet one of the board members who represents Third Mutual. The next sessions are Friday, January 22nd at 9 a.m. and Wednesday, February 16th at 4.30 p.m. Please make a reservation by emailing info at lagunawoodsvillage.com. And that concludes my updates. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was remiss in the member comments not to thank Ms. Collins for her work on the foundation and all it does for members of the village. So thank you very much. You. I apologize for not having mentioned that earlier. We now move to the consent calendar. All matters listed on this consent calendar are moved by a single action. 
Uh, we have the recommendations from the Landscape Committee, the recommendations from the Finance Committee, and the recommendations from the Architectural Controls and Standards Committee. Uh, can I ask for a motion to approve the consent calendar, please? I see Director Wayne, was that a hand? Director Wayne moves. A second by anybody? Director Engdahl seconds. I have a discussion. All right, thank you. A discussion about the consent calendar? Go ahead. Yes. On uh, 11D that uh, Director Cook has brought to our attention. Uh, no, 11D? Yeah, 11D, yeah. 1 and 2 that was brought to our attention by uh, Director Cook. Actually, those uh, resolutions have not been read. The resolutions have not been read. Here the, the, the resolutions have not been read? Here to the boardroom, so the people outside that are not here with the packet, they have not seen those resolutions. So we need to, so, excuse me, shh, shh, quiet please. Uh, so if what I'm hearing correctly, if those resolutions have not been formally read, right. it should not be on the consent calendar. Yeah, we just have to move them down to unfinished business. Okay, if that's the case, then let's move, uh, can I get a, a motion then? Well, let's just see. Can I, at the moment, let's, can I get um, the mover, the second and the mover on the consent to withdraw their motion at this point? Are you willing to withdraw your motion? Withdraw the motion. Okay, so now the, rec the position is to get a motion to move the uh, D, 11D, down to unfinished business. Is that right, correct? Right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and accept that as a uh, as something we're going to do, rather than have to call for a formal motion to that, because we were moving items before, just off the consent calendar at the request of members. So I will move D, uh, 11D down to uh, 12C. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we can read those motions. All right. The resolutions. Resolutions is unfinished business. Okay. So now, for the consent calendar, we have B and C, recommendations from the Landscape Committee and recommendations from the Finance Committee. Can I get a motion to approve the consent calendar for those two items, B and C? Cook has his hand up. Uh, Director Cook, you have a hand one, up? One point. Sure. Yes. Uh, the resolutions are included in our packet here. They're not included. So to the I don't public. understand why we're going to be delaying somebody's approval of this. All of it was already in the alterations to public view. And I think this is just another practice. Can we get a confirmation from one of the staff as to whether or not that is necessary when you've already delayed these variances? for three months. Well, Mr. Cook, Director Cook, I don't think that moving them to unfinished business, they're not going on 28 day. They'll go to unfinished business, the resolution will be read and approved. Today. Today. Yeah. So it won't change the approval okay. of them. The Just wanted to make sure that was going to happen. What, Mr. Cook? Say that again? I, that sounds fine to me. I just want to make sure okay. that was yeah. the case. Yeah, I, don't, I, I agree with you. It's not, we're not intending to delay this at all. Right. Okay. All right, so I forgot now where exactly I am. Can I get a motion to approve the consent calendar? B and C, items B and C. I see Director Wayne again. B and C, 11 B and C. And I see Director Engel is a second. All right, hearing no more discussion at this point in time, I'll assume then that uh, everybody is in agreement and uh, that we will approve the consent calendar. 11, item, 11 items B and C by consent, unless I hear differently. All right, moving on. We're now down to unfinished business, entertain a motion to approve a contract of violation policy. Uh, this was initially on uh, 28 days uh, notification. Director Jarrett, are you gonna read the? All right, we'll let her read them. Motion. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. <clears throat> the resolution for the contractor violation policy reads as, 
that follows. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereas the purpose of the contractor violation policy is to enact a unilateral and unambiguous matrix of penalties for contractors who violate current mutual rules and obligations or exceed the scope of approval for a project. <coughs> And whereas this pending resolution would make the contractor violation policy permanent and provide a clear template for invoking penalties, inclusive of temporary or potentially permanent suspension from work within Laguna Woods Village, reduction of MC lifespan, and lifespan to 90 days with the possibility for an approved timeline extension and Whereas the third ACSC and manor alterations agree that the contractor violation policy will be affected and both recommend the approval by the third ACSC. Now, therefore, be it resolved on December 21, 2021, third mutual hereby approve the contractor violation policy as attached to these minutes. <coughs> Resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. The 28-day uh, revision has been already, uh, it's been satisfied. Right. Thank so you. Can I get a motion to approve the contract of violation policy? So moved. Director Bada moves. Can I get a second? I see Director McCarry second. Any discussion? Director Lewis. At this point, uh, I see this uh, as unrealistic in this in this construction constru day and age of construction. Uh, you're shrinking the permits from 180 days to 90 days. Um, that's not functional in a big remodel. Um, just simply isn't with uh, supplies. Uh, contractors keeping their subs separate in order to keep them healthy. Everything takes longer. Uh, due to that, supplies are a problem. Even the city acknowledges that there's a supply problem uh, with simple things like uh, uh, the, the new breaker switches, um, and they're having to work around that to uh, satisfy the, the state's needs um, by having you replace outlets, which are um, sometimes not available. All this extends time, and I think cutting the time in half of a permit is not a good idea at this point in time, especially when it's, when it's stated by um, the head of alterations that they're not up to date on, and they're slowing things down. Um, and that was in their report by Robbie Doncast. Um, so at this time, uh, I think it's uh, more draconian than realistic. Um, there are, are some other specific things um, that need to be clarified, but right uh, under uh, number five, under exhibit A, the right of uh, property entry at any time it needs to be uh, clarified. The change uh, on now no work is permitted on weekends. That's going to slow things down as well, uh, which we have work now up until 3 o'clock on the weekends. Um, I went over that. Um, alterations has no schedule for how fast they're going to get their work done. Right now it takes uh, approximately two weeks to get a reply to an email. Uh, to alteration. So uh, all these things together, I think this is the wrong time uh, to try to shorten things when things are, are long. It's unrealistic um, f um, in the world we live in today. So. Okay. Any other comments? Director Laws? Yes. It looks like Mr. Cook is... Oh, Director, Director Cook, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, I was on the phone today with the planning department at the city of Laguna Woods and in discussing with them what their actual time frames are on permit and inspection guidelines, basically that's the same thing as number 15 on page 53 of 54. And if in reality on page 47 of 54, the whole purpose of this is to avoid using unnecessary staff time and resources diverted to regulating and overseeing contractor violations and corrections. Item number 15, this is already all done by the city on a much more uh, 
compatible with the circumstances of COVID and supply chain. And I don't even understand why we're getting involved in it when under the permit process, the city and the inspection time frame, as long as you're moving forward on your construction, it gets done. And no one that's doing construction wants to delay their construction time. They want to actually increase it. But the reality of today's market and supply chain is that why are we going to try and police something that's already done by the city if we really, in fact, want to reduce unnecessary staff time in doing it? So I would recommend that item 15 just be deferred to comply with City of Laguna Woods time frames for permit and inspection guidelines and we not be the policing agency. Just my opinion. Okay, and Director Laws. Yeah, yeah, during last uh, month's meeting, I brought up some concerns. I shared uh, some written concerns with the third members architectural committee members. Um, none of those are in here, so I'll be voting no on this. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Hearing the concern, hearing, oh, Gavin, you've joined us. Okay, Gavin. Thank you. Yeah, I was just getting on as a panelist there. Um, so just to ad address a couple of the issues there. Um, the first is regarding the reduction of time uh, for a project to be completed. This uh, is accounted for as far as, let me just put up in the severe violations uh, section number four. Um, basically, the, the contingency is there, so manor alterations has some form of standard as far as having contractors that do take multiple projects all at once, and basically what they'll do is they'll follow mutual consent um, for multiple units, knowing that they're not actually going to even start work for one of the projects for maybe three or four or five months down the line. Um, this contingency is there for that sort of situation, not for just a run of a mill project that's being performed. Um, if there is any sort of major supply issue um, that is taken into consideration um, with the severe violations uh, explanation section four, um, there is a force majeure condition. Basically, if there is a, a major or a, a national issue or a statewide issue or even a, a city issue, where there's supply concerns, then we take that into consideration. Um, same as if there is just a, a project specific item that is causing delay, all that we're asking is, is that the contractor reach out to us and be able to be proactive and say, look, this is what's happening on the project. It's gonna take a little bit longer and we are gonna be completely flexible to be able to accept that. Um, the, the problem that we have is, is that we have very little um, well, currently, we have no authorization over the contract at this point. We have no means to be able to enforce any specific rule or policy that we have. Everything goes to the member. And so putting this in place, yes, it kind of it covers every situation, but it does give us basically the flexibility to apply it when it's necessary, um, which is when there isn't a good uh, reason or an excuse for why a project's being uh, delayed other than the contractor is just taking too much work that they can handle at that specific point. Um, another item that I believe came up, um, let me have a look here. Um, let's see, I, I believe that was the main issue. If there's any other concerns that uh, come up from that. Director Cook, Director Cook, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, Donna. Uh, Direct, go well, ahead, Director that's Cook. all good and fine. You're saying that, but but what's in writing is in writing, and that does not designate that there's any flexibility to the extent that you're saying verbally. And years down the road, this is going to be interpreted much differently than you saying what you're saying compared to what is written. I understand. I mean, th th that's something that the, you know, the, the board are there to, to make that overall determination. Um, I mean, essentially, what would happen in that given situation would be is, is that, we, you know, we always have to reach out to that contractor first. 
So the initial contact would be from us to them asking why it's taking X amount of days over uh, the assigned time and, and you know, that would open up that communication for us. Uh, whether or not you want to check and balance on top of that, um, that's absolutely fine. Um, I mean, uh, again, I, I'm expecting that all of the, you know, so the initial contact between manor alterations and the contractors and members, that's just going to be handled within the department. However, if it gets to the point of any suspensions becoming effective, that would be brought up at each of the committee meetings uh, on the monthly basis, and that can, you know, still be reviewed by the committee um, or the board, depending on, you know, how many uh, eyes you want to have checking that on a monthly basis. But you know, all of this is going to be transparent to the committees and the boards to be able to see exactly who, if anyone, is under a current suspension. Um, but there's going to be, you know, we're not looking to prevent anybody from working inside of the community. Um, we are just looking to make sure that everyone is one, adhering by the community uh, rules, but also the, the best interests for our residents who, you know, aren't being put off and being delayed on their own project. Director Rain Sosak, you have your hand up. Yes. Um, I, my understanding is that the purpose of this particular um, issue is to protect our residents, to protect the community. And in that respect, it's a wonderful idea. If, in fact, though, there are pieces of it that are written in such a way that there are too subject to interpretation, perhaps, depending upon how long it would take, it might be best to take a look at that again and change the wording. If, in fact, just tweaking some of the wording to take away some interpretation and make it a little clearer, uh, if it would help. Because the purpose of this isn't to just rules on top of rules and then say, well, it's okay, they aren't really rules. Um, because because we really do want to protect the residents from those contractors who do not work with the ethics standard that others do. So my thought would be perhaps if there isn't objection, we should look at this again and, and see if there isn't a way to word it better. I don't know if any of the other directors agree, but that sounds like a possibility. I get Director Lewis. Yeah. I'll have to agree with uh, with Donna on um, that some of the the wording in this, uh, since it it seemed uh, Mr. Fogg is uh, promoting this more for uh, multiple projects taken on by by a contractor and they wouldn't start in a number of months. Then there needs to be some kind of separation, um, especially when, as I said. Uh, that Saturdays are no longer uh, permitted to uh, uh, finish up projects. That just makes a project longer, not shorter. Um, and a major, um, as we move forward in this community, there's going to be more and more major rebuilds that are going to take longer and longer to do. Um, raising ceilings, new beams, changing plumbing. This is all going to take a significant amount of time um, especially, as I said before, within COVID when most conscientious um, contractors are keeping their, their sub crews separate instead of having two or three different crews work at the same time. Um, they're not in order to prevent cross-contamination. So you have uh, many, many uh, uh, things that influencing, even when you go back to just Supplies. I had I had problems with supplies. The the city realized this that some things you just cannot get, um, plain and simple. You have to wait months, if not you know weeks, if you're lucky. Months. Um, more the case. Uh, breaker switches being one of them. Uh, they're just not available, and uh, this will slow down a project um, because then all the alternatives get get purchased and uh, you're out of luck in that respect. And this will just sit and sit and delay and delay. So um, this needs to be reworked, as Donna said. Uh, perhaps uh, the text needs to be changed somewhat, and some of the policy needs to be stepped back and, and looked at. Um, as uh, Director Cook said, uh, that down the road, it's going to be interpreted differently. Um, we can say one thing verbally, but once when it's in print, it's in print. And we do need to fix it and make it right. Okay. I guess what I'm hearing from people, at least the ones who are speaking, is that uh, this needs some additional work. 
And what I'm hearing is that they would like it to be sent back to committee for further review and consideration of some of the issues that have been raised here today. Uh, and I'm okay with sending it back to committee if that's the wish of the, the board. And I'm hearing from at least four people that that's the wish. I'm talking about Director Cook, Director Laws, Director Lewis, and Director Rain Sosak. So I don't know how the rest of you feel, but if that's the sense of the, of the board, then I think that's what we should do. Director Bada. I would concur with the gentlemen who have suggested that we send it back for review again. Okay. Director Wayne, did you want to, you, no, no comment? Anybody, Director? I, I think though, um, anything that we can do to make it a lot clearer so that the simplest person can understand it, if, if that can be achieved in this document, then I will support sending it back to committee to sort of um, uh, simplify it if, if possible. Okay. Anyone else want to speak? I, I would agree. I would, I'd like to Director Jarrett, please. I'd like to send it back to committee. Okay. <clears throat> so, hearing all of that, then I would like to ask that the mover of the motion and the seconder of the motion, if they're willing to withdraw their move and second, and then we'll just have a motion to send it back to committee instead, rather than vote it down and then, okay. Can I, who made, who moved it? Who was the mover and who was the second? I, did, I think I made the motion. Uh, Craig and uh, Engdahl and, uh, Craig, seconded. Oh, Craig Wayne and Engdahl, were you willing yeah. to, re, to withdraw your, mo Annie? You made, you seconded the motion, right? I don't yes, All right. I made the motion and Annie seconded the motion. All right, so Chris made the motion, Annie seconded. Are you willing to withdraw? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now that the motion's withdraw, can I get a motion to send this back to committee for further consideration and review? So Director moved. Laws. So moved. Okay. Second. Director, I'll take Director Lewis as the second in this case. All right. Any discussion <coughs> about the motion to send it back to committee? Hearing none, I will then assume then by consent that everyone is in favor of sending this back to committee, unless I hear otherwise. All right. This one is sent back to committee. All right, next item on the agenda is entertain a motion to introduce a revised resolution for stepping stone policy and guidelines. All right. Um, this is, goes on 28 days, right? It's already, it's already excuse me, it's already been uh, on 28 day review. Okay. And so so if, uh, we need a motion to approve it. Are you going to read this it? needs to go on another 28-day review because it was it had um, changes done to it. It was sent back to the committee. It came back this time. It does need to go for another 28 days. Another tw that's what I thought yes. it says. It says must postpone for 28 days for member review. Okay. So this one, the motion to uh, stepping stones will go on 28 days. Okay. All right. Uh, then we moved uh, D, recommendation uh, to approve from the Architects and Control Standards Committee the variance request for uh, 5560A and 5417. Uh, you want to read those two? Yes. Sir. And then we'll uh, take that. Director Laws? Just for point of clarification, why did we move these out of the consent calendar? I, I, I don't understand the process. So I'm, I'm learning here. Because we didn't read the resolution. Because Direct. we didn't read the resolution, so the, the membership can hear it. What's well, because well, we can see what we have in the packet, but the membership cannot see what's in the packet. So for the record, that's why we read the resolution. How, how about the resolutions for the landscape committee? recommendations, for instance, or the resolutions for the liens, for instance. I, I, I don't, I, read those, I, I don't I understand that, how these two are different than the others. Because we always put those on, uh, on the uh, consent calendar, and if anybody wants to pull one back, that's what we do. We pull it back for landscape. Uh, no, no, but he's, his question is, and it's why are we... We did not read the resolution on removal of the tree. 
but we are now going to read the resolution on the variance. Why, why, why are we doing one and not the other? This is question. Why, why didn't we read the recommendation? If I'm hearing you correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm just under, trying question. to understand yeah, the that's, process. That's a good question, but we do not read things that are on the consent calendar. So then why, <laughs> why did we pull these off? No, right. these are, we, well, well, wait. Then sorry. his question uh, is, why uh, did we pull these uh, off of I the I will tell you why. Okay. Because of Director Cook. He had a question. No. no, Director Cook only asked. Director Cook only asked that the word "recommend approval," that the word "approval" be put in on the D, not that there be anything else related to the variance. So these could have stayed as part of. Oh, I, I didn't see that. But okay, well that was a misunderstanding. So, mm -hmm. what I'd like to do is approve by consent the recommendations from the Architectural Control and Standards Committee okay. for the variance requests, period. Number. Can I get a motion to approve by consent? What number? It is now... So moved. No. It is now number 12C, because we pulled it from the consent calendar, but I want to treat it just like it's part of the consent calendar, and therefore I'm asking for a motion to approve both by consent as if it was originally part of the consent calendar. So Director Lewis moves. Can I, I so move. Director Cook seconds, okay? Any objections? If not, then the motion to approve as part of the consent calendar, the two variances that are on the original consent calendar is approved, okay? Okay. All right. Now, new business. <laughs> Entertain a motion to approve a transfer of $5 million from SunWest IntraFi savings account to an IntraFi certificate of deposit account for a term of one year. Director Cook, you have a hand up still. Is that your intent? Uh, so moved. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Director Cook moves. Second. A second. Director Bada seconds. Uh, is there any need for discussion about this? Director Lewis. Uh, I had one question at the meeting before. I believe uh, that Director Wayne was going to double check with uh, um, SunWest about the possibility of an increased rate, and I don't know what the result of that was. Now that we have agreed that we want to move the money, I will be contacting them to ask them if they can do that for us. Great. Yep. This is what I was waiting for. Okay. We any, need, other, any other discussion? What? No, we just need to re read the resolution. Yeah, so go ahead and read the resolution so that it's official in the record. All right. The resolution is discre discretionary investment transfer to CD. Resolved December 21, 2021, that the board of directors of this corporation hereby authorizes, authorizes the transfer of $5 million money market discretionary investments to a certificate of deposit discretionary investment, CDARS, with a term of one year, and resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution as written. So you just need to vote on it now. Okay. Any other discussion, questions, or comments <clears throat> related to transferring the $5 million from the money market to a one-year CD? Um, Hearing none. Just for clarification. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you for, thank yeah, you, Director McCarran. Go ahead. Go ahead, Director Sosak. Yeah. Just for clarification, Director Wayne has been um, talking in contact with SunWest, and the reason for moving that money was to have a slight increase in our earnings rate on that amount of money. And that doesn't appear in the, in the records. I just want to make sure that, for the record, people understood the purpose of that move. Okay, no. Thank you. Any other discussion or comments? Hearing none, I will then go ahead and assume that uh, this is approved by consent unless I hear otherwise. Hearing no objections, the motion to move the $5 million has been approved. And Director Wayne, you will now charge with contacting them and discussing whether or not we can get a better rate. Correct. Thank you. 
All right. We pulled from the consent calendar at the request of Director Laws the committee appointments. So we now have the committee appointments. Can I get a motion to approve the committee appointments? And then we'll open it up for discussion. I so move. Director McCarry moves. Can I get a second? I'll second. Director Jarrett seconds. Okay. Discussion. Director Laws, since it was your request to pull it, what are your questions or comments? Yeah. Um, um, I'm commenting on the, the change to the chair of the landscape committee. Um, as I was uh, campaigning, uh, well over 90% of the people I talked to were dissatisfied with the uh, landscaping. And uh, I'd like to see that uh, we have some new leadership uh, in the landscaping committee versus uh, what, what has been there for a while. That's my request, is that we okay. change the chair to somebody else. Well, I can tell you that the reason that I made the change in chair was twofold. One was because Director McCarry is overburdened with in terms of the number of committees that she's not only on, but also chairs. And also I wanted to put uh, Director Jarrett back in because of her experience, there's nobody else that has the experience that she has in working on it. But we do have new members on that committee as well that certainly can contribute and uh, hopefully move the landscaping in the direction that will satisfy more members, but that was my reasoning. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the committee structure? All right. Anybody else? Hearing none, no more discussion. Director Cook, did you want to say something? Yeah, in reference to that, you just said you were, Annie McCary was overburdened and you made her the chair of that. No, she, she's no longer the chair. That's what it says, but that's what it says on our paperwork here. On the landscape committee, Annie McCary chair. No, it was, well, I, I don't know, I'm not exactly, Director Cook, I'm not exactly Page sure what you're looking at. What I'm looking at says landscape committee uh, in red next to Lynn Jarrett's name, it says chair, Annie McCary, the chair is crossed out. What, Director Lewis, you know what he's looking at? Uh, Jim, or, Jim. What I'm looking at, it shows Annie McCary as chair. Jim, Jim, um, take a yep. look at agenda item 11E on page two of six. It's one of the yellow pages, about uh, third section of yellow pages back. Um, and you'll see Annie is uh, crossed out and Lynn is- Jared is chair. Is chair. Okay. All right, also just okay. as a- do you see that now? Yes. Okay. Also, just as a comment, if you'll notice, we've added a whole bunch of people as advisors. These are the people who applied, and I met with each of the chairs of the committees to discuss the different applications. We actually got a, a number of applications greater than the number of people who were appointed as advisors. So uh, we did appoint a, a lot of them are in red who are the new advisors. Some of them are carryovers that are in black that have been previous advisors that we've been very satisfied with. So uh, you can see that uh, some of the new, most of the changes on the committee uh, appointments are all the new advisors. That's most of it, all right? All right, any other discussion about the committees? Hearing none. Uh, Director Laws, I don't know how you feel about this at this point, whether I can call for consent or not. Uh, I'll vote no. You'll vote no? Okay, then we'll, uh, anybody else? Uh, do we wanna go round and vote or do we want to uh, just do by consent except for Director Laws, unless there's anybody else? All right, hearing none, then Director Laws will be list. Director Lewis? I'll vote. You'll vote no? Okay. Director Lewis and Director Laws should be listed. Director Bada? Yes, Director Bada will now vote no. So we have three no votes on the committee appointment list. And the rest will consider then by consent as approval. So it'll be eight approved and three against. All right. Moving on. Committee reports. Director Rain Sotsak, you're up with the Finance Committee, please. Okay. Yes, the Finance Committee, this is the report of the Finance Committee meeting. The Finance Committee meets the first Tuesday of the month, and therefore, we do not have results 
in the December, early December meeting. For November, they are of October 31st. So by the time the board meets two weeks later, um, one would wonder why they're so far back. But it's October 31st because that's the data we have to work with. And let's start with the first slide, if we can, for the financial report. Grant, if you can put that up. Thank you so much. Okay, as we begin, we start with just a general income statement. We always wanna know what came in and what went out. Our assessment revenue was $28,833,000 and the non-assessment revenue, $1,341,000. And we'll be talking about that non-assessment revenue later. For total revenue of, and this is overall, this is all of our accounts, all of our funds, total revenue of 30174000 and total expenses, again, overall were less than that. They were 29,625 for a net revenue over expense of $549,000. But that's just an overview and not the entire picture. So let's move on to the next slide where we're going to look at the operating income statement. And this is, if we can move to that next slide. Um, this is the operating, thank you, the operating income statement. This is the operating fund, the one we work from, the one we budget for in expenses we anticipate for the year. And um, assessment revenue was 17473000 non-assessment revenue $1.254 million for total revenue of 18727 against total expenses of 19 million. $266,000. So in terms of the operating budget, there was a deficit of $539,000, which we will be looking at in a moment. But let's turn now to our income statement and look where the money came from. And on slide number three, the income statement, you can see assessment revenue was budgeted for and received $28,833,000. There was no variance. Our non-assessment revenue was less than anticipated. We had anticipated $1,808,000 and received $1.341 million for a variance, a negative, of $467,000. So our total revenue, $30,174,000. Fortunately, our expenses were less than anticipated as well. We had budgeted for an anticipated expenses of $32,309,000, and the expenses were only $29,625,000. And we will see in a moment why those things were lower. So we do have a favorable overall picture of 540, of a variance of $2,217,000 in our favor. If we move on to the next slide, which is one that really is so much easier to understand and it's one of my favorites, because that line going right down the center represents what we budgeted, where we anticipated. And the only bars that you're going to see are those that are, those that, um, are either better than anticipated or less than. Outside services were favorable $3,788,000. And that was mostly due to a late start. So eventually some of those wheels will be coming in, but at, as of October 31st, that's where it stood. Employee compensation was favorable, primarily in landscape and MNC. In the landscape department, ground maintenance was favorable because of eight staff positions that were outsourced. And uh, carpentry services over an MNC side had a budgeted position put on hold in the beginning of the year, and that position remains open. So that is why we were favorable in that area. I'm pleased to report that legal fees were favorable by $101,000 uh, because of lower expenditures, and um, that's a very good thing to see. But Legal fees are a contingency fund. These are anticipated, but we never can really tell because legal issues can come up, but they're favorable at the moment by $101,000, and we'd like to see that. Professional fees are slightly less. Again, consultants were unable to fulfill some of the work that they were going to be doing, so that was favorable by $82,000. On the negative side, the yellow bars moving over to the left, $166,000 unfavorable in utilities and telephone, and that was primarily water. And we'll talk about water a little later when the Water Committee report is done. But um, 
We had less water this year, as everyone knows, despite the deluge last week and the one anticipated this week, we had less water this year and landscaping water over the summer was higher. And we also had a raise in our water expenses starting July 1 from El Toro Water District. The next unfavorable was this was, it was an unrealized gain or loss on our funds, and it's related very closely to our investment income. These were unrealized losses. That means that at one point, the bonds that we had on paper were doing well, and then they weren't. But because of the need to have them in FDIC assure accounts, et cetera, they have been moved over, and we've had extensive reports on that, and they are now sitting at SunWest Bank in federally insured um, deposits. And what's really wonderful about it is we will not have any charges anymore by the bank for holding that money and for managing it, whereas we, in the past we always did. And then insurance, as we know, um, was a big portion. And a lot of that insurance, insurance went up no matter what. Insurance rates increased because of the huge losses the insurance industry experienced, hurricanes, um, earthquakes, California fires over the past several years. So rates went up anyway, but this was primarily due to the re-evaluation of our property and some of the mandates of our CCNRs. So let's move on to the next slide where you can see some of our non-assessment revenue. And, and I, pie charts are really nice because they just illustrate so clearly not only the amount, but the percentage and, and the weight of it. And our fees and charges to residents are clearly in this orange area, um, the highest portion and contribute greatly to our non-assessment revenue. But interestingly, lease processing fees, laundry, money from the laundry rooms and resale processing fees also play a considerable role to a much smaller extent investment income uh, interest rates being so low uh, was only six percent of that golf cart electric fees miscellaneous revenue and late fee revenues bringing that to uh, the full total of our non-assessment revenues as we move on to look at our total expenses this is everything put together and clearly the largest portion of our total expenses are employee compensation and related. Um, and that is something that has always been a big piece and it continues to get bigger because of salary increases, et cetera. Outside services, 19% of our total expenses. Insurance was 18%, so it is a hefty piece. Utilities and telephone, another large piece. And then to a much smaller expense, extent materials and supplies, net allocation to the mutuals, and then the very small area of leadable fees and others. So let's move on. We talked about the operating fund and what we plan for. We also have non-operating funds, and those are the replacement funds, the disaster fund, the unappropriated expenditures fund, which otherwise known as a contingency fund in many other sources, and the garden villa fund. And so our non-operating fund balances, we began with $17,437,000 um, in the replacement fund, disaster fund at 6.8 plus million, 4.2 million for the contingency fund and the garden villa fund at $89,000 for a total um, non-operating fund balance of 28,640. And our contributions, as you can see, we received $9,000, uh, $9,000, I wish, $9,325,000 um, from contributions and interest replacement funds. We have $1.551 million in the disaster fund. The unappropriate expenditures fund, that's the contingency fund, got $499,000 and $71,000 in the garden bill of fund. Our expenditures against those, 7,122 in replacement, 2.321 in the disaster fund. The unappropriated expenditures fund it was 732,000 and the garden bill of fund 71,000. And so our current balances as of, remember that's as of October 31st, 19,640 in the replacement fund, 6,073,000 in the disaster unappropriated expenditures or contingency, 4,038,000 and 89,000 in the garden villa 
for a total in the non-operating fund balances of $29,840,000. And if we move to the next slide, this one really shows things a little bit more easily. Because here's a bar graph, and it shows over the years from 2017 through to 2021, as of October 31st, the balances and kind of the proportions of our funds. So in orange are the replacement funds. And as you can see, they've had this year, we have really increased that. This facilities in the community are aging and we anticipate more replacement. And so that fund is growing. And the next one, the disaster fund has shrunk a little bit. It kind of stayed steady over the years. No, we're not ready for the resale history, come back. <laughs> the disaster fund has shrunk a little bit. Um, that is being replaced, some of the money for the insurance to help cover the excess cost beyond what um, association fees are doing came from the disaster fund and is being put back. The unappropriated expenditures fund, that stays fairly constant. It's a little higher now because again, as the facilities age, we anticipate we might have more unexpected costs. And at the very, very top, you can see a very fine little beige bar um, and that's the Garden Villa Recreation Room Fund, and it hasn't changed appreciably over the years. But that gives you a picture of how these non-operating funds are looking. If we move to the very last part of the financial report of the main report, now we have the resale history, and it's always good to save the good news for last. 2019, we had 338 resales, and of course, in 2020, when the pandemic hit, that dropped considerably. But this year, we are coming back. There are more resales than we've had in actually the last two years. So that's, that's good. We have 405 resales. And I want to call your attention to the average resale price. Back in 2019, it was approximately $409,000 per manor in 2020, 422. So in spite of the pandemic, the prices did go up a bit. But this year in 2021, as of the end of October, the average resale price is 458,643 for an increase from 2019 to 2021 of almost $50,000. And that's the appreciation of our real estate. So um, given that, we'll move on to the special part of the report, that is the financial report, but we now move on to the next item on the agenda, um, which is the highlight and as part of the financial report. Expenses are going up, costs are going up, our facilities are aging and we're needing repairs and replacements. But in spite of all of this, there have been cost saving initiatives that are at least helping keep our costs down and keeping our community maintained at the level it needs to be. So this month, I'd like to highlight the landscape department. Prior to the, this initiative, we paid to have large tree trunks and other landscape debris hauled away. We also paid to have horse manure hauled away from the stable. And then once those things were hauled away, we bought mulch and brought it back in a different form. So let's look and see what, what that did, what it cost us and what it saved us to make some changes a little bit. If we can move to the very next slide, please. You see a picture of a very large machine. That's called a tub grinder and GRF purchased that to convert landscape debris to mulch. And that purchase was made not out of third mutual funds, but out of GRF funds to benefit the entire community. Because of that, and you can see one of the piles starting, these are compost piles that are, that are over in our lot, and they are managed very, very carefully. It, because of this, because of this machine that pretty much goes all day long, it's no longer necessary to pay to haul away landscape debris and manure from the stables. They're put in, the, in this tub grinder and turned into mulch for us and compost, and we no longer have to purchase mulch. This was a huge change and has made a very big savings for us without decreasing any of the benefit to the community. So let's go and see how much money did it save us. On the very next slide, you can see that prior to getting this tub grinder and putting it in service so that we no longer haul away all of the things and then purchase back the mulch, we spent $550,000, a little over that, um, to haul away landscape debris and manure, we now spend zero. 
The cost to purchase mulch was a little over $301,000. And again, that cost is now zero. For a total expense prior to using the tub grinder and creating our own mulch, it was $852,027 every single year. Now, green waste transport, when, when we started converting things into mulch and not hauling the landscape debris away and maintaining the machine, there is a slight expense with this. And to maintain that, to transport the green waste over and turn it into compost and then ultimately mulch, the cost per year is $63,182. So if you look at that across the bottom line, we have a total annual savings for this a cost savings initiative alone of almost $800,000 a year. So our thanks to the landscaping department and that concludes the finance report for this month. Are there any questions? Director Lewis. Oh, we have one other, yeah, I almost forgot. We should not, <laughs> never ignore uh, what Laguna Woods did for us when GRF purchased that machine and I thought you would appreciate knowing. Um, what this savings was, we saw what it saved Third Mutual, the savings to Laguna Goods Village was even greater. Used to spend almost a million dollars for all of the village combined to haul away the landscape and debris and manure and purchasing mulch was over half a million dollars. So that annual cost added together was a little over $1.5 million. The green waste transport only costs us $112,000 a year. This is again for the entire village of Laguna Woods. And we have an sa annual savings in total of $1.400,095. So again, as I said earlier, a thanks to the landscaping department for this cost savings initiative. And next month we will highlight another area. Thank you. And that concludes the report. Are there any questions? Director Lewis. Uh, just one quick one um, on page five of 16. Could you talk a little louder? Oh, sorry. Uh, on page five of 16, the fees, charges, and charges to residents. Can you have a, just a quick summary? I don't need to know all the details, but a uh, quick summary of some of those fees and charges um, charged to the residents. We charge fees for... Um, my mind just went completely blank, which is absolutely absurd because I wasn't thinking <laughs> of it. But these are, these are all the fees that we pay for various services, and anytime you pay one of them, you know, I, someone who is more wide awake at the moment than I am for some reason. Let me, let me try to help you a little bit, Doc, yeah. Director Rain Sotak. Yeah, I, I, I always know it, and it was like... <laughs> yeah, the lease processing fee... When a member wants to lease their unit, there's a fee for reviewing the application and approving the application. Yeah, and I think he was talking about the uh, fees I'm talking about the 44% fees charges to residents. The general fees that we the, the, the general fees. That's all. Just a quick Yeah, overview. and the only reason I'm hesitant is because we pay some monies that don't go into that fund, and I want to make sure that we've got that correct. Um, Siobhan, can you help us out? Again, I would assume um, a lot of these are fees associated with resales and so forth, where there's property transfers and residents pay costs associated with that would be my speculation. But we'll get a firm answer before and that closed also, session. That would also include chargeable services as well. Yeah, it's just this huge, broad catch-all. Yeah, chargeable services, uh, we pay fees for, for various things. Um, and I, and do so I will give you, because it is good to know. Hmm? Director McCary? I, I was just going to just throw in, I believe there's a, a fee that we charge for co-occupancy for the application yeah. um, for that. And what, what I would like to do, if, if the uh, board agrees, I'd like next month, I will report to both the Finance Committee and to the board the total listing of where those fees come from. Okay. Anybody else question? Director Laws. Uh, yes, uh, when was that tub grinder purchased? Yeah. About two years ago? Two years. About two, three years, two years. About, it's, been, it's been purchased within the last 20, two years. 20, I know that for, a, I yeah. can't tell you exactly, but I know for a fact because it was purchased after I moved here. <laughs> so it's within the last two years. So it was put into full service. 
I would say probably closer to two years ago than, than today. All right. Director yes. Antosak, thank you very much for an always informative and interesting report. Thank you for all your effort. All right. Next is the Architectural Control and Standards Committee. And that committee last met November 22nd. The members of the committee heard an update on the current status of Manor Alterations Office. They are now fully staffed. Uh, at this point, Mr. Donkost, who is head of Manor Alterations, believes that things are trending in the right direction. And uh, this may be due in part now to the fact that they are fully staffed. A discussion ensued about when we can expect the integration of new technology to assist with tracking and analysis of data. The ITAC committee, headed by Chuck Holland, is working on identifying and recommending a software package that is scalable and will meet a variety of EMS needs and therefore our member needs. Director Laws and Director Jarrett are our two representatives on that ITAC committee. And uh, we hope to have a selection of a particular software within the next few months. And I'm not sure about when implementation would take place once it's purchased, but I think we're moving in that direction. Uh, probably more from the ITAC committee later on today in the committee reports. Uh, two variance requests were recommended by the committee. Uh, those requests were acted upon earlier in today's meeting by the board and were approved. Water heater enclosure was also a topic of discussion. Uh, the discussion uh, on this issue included the potential for updating existing structures, the capacity to grandfather in existing structures, as well as a moratorium on new structures since they require the need to be placed in common area and not in exclusive use common area. So at this point, uh, we're kind of putting that on hold until we can uh, adjust the policy to properly reflect that. The committee is still working on a policy related to requests for handrails in the common area. The current draft of the proposed policy is in need of some changes and was tabled until our next meeting of the committee. And the next meeting of the committee is December 27th at 9.30. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Yes, question. Oh, Director Frankel. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be out of town. That's the, uh, the Monday right after Christmas and you might wanna check, make sure you got a quorum. Okie doke, thank you very much, will do. All right, next is the report on the Communications Committee, Director McCarry. Thank you, uh, President Munchenik. The third Communications Committee has not met since October. Um, the next meeting is scheduled for January 12th at uh, 1.30 p.m. in the Willow Room and as a virtual meeting, thank you. Thank you very much. And next is the report of the Maintenance and Construction Committee, Director Engdahl. Thank you. Uh, last uh, full meeting was uh, November 21, a, uh, there were a number of comments of general interest and some of which were addressed directly. Uh, the staff was authorized to develop a scope of work addressing the groundwater problem at gate 11 and uh, determine, also to determine the cost of common lighting area in the three-story buildings, uh, that is ones that had not already been converted, uh, talking about timers and photo sensors and so forth. Uh, there was a, uh, also a request on uh, status of the update on, or an update status on uh, State Bill 326, which uh, was an inspection, regular inspection of the integrity and waterproofing and of certain building exterior components. Um, and one of the members also requested, and uh, I think we agreed to do that, look into the frequency for termite and dry rot inspection. Uh, Next meeting is scheduled for January 3rd next year. Thank you, Thank Director you. Engdahl. Next up is report on the parking and golf cart subcommittee. Director Bada. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The parking and golf cart, uh, golf cart uh, committee has not met since uh, August 18th. Uh, a lot of changes in the department as well as in our committees have happened. So our next meeting is scheduled for <clears throat> January 19th. Um, more details to follow. We don't know whether it's going to be in the morning or afternoon, but I know it's going to be in the boardroom. Thank you, Thank Thank you Director Bartis. Next is the Garden Villa Recreation Subcommittee. Uh, Director Jarrett. Well, I've already given a report uh, on the September 29th meeting. 
The next meeting will be February the 23rd. That's a Wednesday in the boardroom. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up is the report on the Landscape Committee. Director McCarry. Thank you, uh, President Munchenick. The Landscape Committee met uh, last uh, uh, December 2nd uh, here in the boardroom. Um, Kirk Wyman discussed, first of all, staffing and budget. He did indicate to the committee that um, he is currently eight people short in terms of the landscaping. He also reported that one person is retiring after 43 years of service to the community. Wow. And so we just both thought that was just, you know, really good news to you that someone has worked here for that amount of time and loved their work. So I apologize for not having his name with me, but he has given Laguna Woods Village 43 years of service. Um, uh, Kurt Wyan also talked about some of the complaints that uh, the Landscape Department had been getting about uh, some of the weeding and trimming. So they, he is in the process of retraining all of the staff in terms of how they uh, go about doing the weeding and trimming. So we can look forward to more information on how that's going. He also gave us a report on um, there's a section in the community, section one is what he called it, and it's located uh, in gate five and six where he's gotten a lot of complaints in that particular area. So um, that area was maintained by a contractor and so that contractor has not been renewed and so landscaping will take over handling um, that particular area in hopes that the, the satisfaction will be increased. He also um, gave a report on some of the key performance indicators. Um, and so I just want, I pulled out a couple of those slides and I can go through those really quickly if you'll show them to us, Grant. The finances. The uh, landscape overview. Okay, so. Um, I believe we're going to go to slide three. And, and while Grant is pulling up the slides, I just also, there, are the slides up? Okay, I can't see, okay. So the first slide is an indication of all of the tickets that's received in the landscaping department. And tickets are generated via a phone call. And so once a phone call is received into resident services, um, a, a ticket is generated. So you can see, see uh, just there was a, the difference in 2020 up until um, just recently, the, um, the number of tickets is pretty much has gone down significantly, significantly over the years. And right now in 2021, we're pretty, pretty similar to the year 20. Uh, 20. Next slide, please. Uh, you can skip that slide. Uh, well, then you can see the tickets. Okay. The next one was really highlighted. It had to do with weeds, and um, everyone's pretty familiar with all the weeds that grow um, within the village, and so um, these are just the number of tickets received from, uh, just for weeds. And you can see the comparison. To date, we've gone down from, year, from last year, 2020, to 2021, uh, from 779 down to 745 as of uh, third quarter. Next slide. Um, again, this is budgeted employees. Um, I wasn't prepared to speak to that one, Grant, so if you can go to the next one. Okay. And this is basically the ground maintenance for um, 2021 third <coughs> quarter. Um, the total number of tickets received versus the total number of tickets completed. They're basically at 27% um, percent completed, total completed. Uh, closed tickets is the, the bright orange section. Yeah. Next slide. 
Um, again, the landscape year today, uh, third quarter, total number of tickets. Um, and this is a comparison with uh, third and United. The, the uh, mustard color one um, is uh, United and third is the, uh, uh, and third is the, um, the, well, they're both yellow, but you can see the difference. Uh, we're running pretty close with the number of tickets with third and United, one at 48% and the other at 51%. And then the 1% is GRF. Next slide. Uh, so this is the completion, uh, complete trim cycle by section. Um, and again, uh, section one is that uh, section where there was some um, dissatisfaction with the, with the contract workers. But you can see that the cycle has, um, you know, has gone up and down. Um, but basically, they're doing pretty well in terms of maintaining. The, the, must, the, the orange color one is the actual and then the, the lighter color one is the budgeted cycle. So the average year to date for completion of three cycles is at 2.94%. Um, Go ahead, Grant. And this slide basically shows what I was speaking to early about that section. And so if you're ever wondering what section you're in, uh, this basically is a map showing the sections for landscaping and section one um, it's up at the top here. That's the section that was having a lot of difficulty with um, dissatisfaction with the cr working that was being done. So again, that um, contract was not renewed and landscaping will be doing the work in that section. Uh, next slide. I do believe that is the, that's the last of the slides that I wanted to talk about. Thank you, Grant. Um, the final thing I wanted to mention is uh, there is a, a YouTube video that's on the website that gives a really, really great tour of landscaping where they uh, give an explanation of what goes on in the nursery. There's a, the video shows what goes on in the mulching yard and the mower shop. It's a very well um, put together YouTube video and it's about 15 to 20 minutes long and uh, it's really informative about what the landscape is actually doing in the community. The next landscape committee meeting is going to be scheduled for January 6th um, at 9.30 a.m. in the boardroom. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you, Director McCarry. I do have a question for you, and it has to do with the slide on weeds. And I noticed that uh, the weed problem was very low for 15, 16, 17, and all of a sudden it shot up. And I guess my question is, does that have to do with the fact that we no longer use Roundup and that the current uh, herbicide that we're using is not as effective. I don't, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just wondering, because I know there was a movement here in the village to no longer use Roundup, and I noticed that there's a major spike about three or four years ago, and we've stayed kind of at that level with weeds, and I'm wondering about if, if that's the issue. Um, you may not know the answer to that. I, and I believe uh, Kurt has spoken to that several times, and that is a major, major portion of the reason that we're seeing so many weeds. Uh, and they've tried different herbicides, non-toxic herbicides, but the weeds tend to grow a lot faster when we're not using something as toxic as uh, the Roundup. So some of the, the products that they're using now are herbicidal, but their, their kill rate is not as strong as the Roundup products. Okay, just when I'm looking at the chart, it jumped out. Director Lewis. Yeah, there, there was also a uh, test run by the uh, Landscape Department on different uh, uh, herbicides uh, to use, and uh, they've settled on, I don't have the information here, but they did settle on uh, one particular one after testing, uh, you know, cost-benefit analysis, basically. And uh, more effective, I think and, be and more effective. And they'll be using, they'll be changing slightly, and so things should become a little more effective as well as safe, safer. Yeah, well, because you could see the dramatic rise and just, yeah. yeah and, and thank you for that, uh, Director Laws. The thank other you. thing that, um, that Kurt talked about in terms of the, the Finale Boost, which is a product that we're, that one of the products that tested, that had a, a good efficacy rate, but uh, what, what they're finding is that the price is significantly greater for the newer products that are on the market versus the Roundup products. So even though uh, you've tested some of the products, um, it's still running into uh, a high issues. cost. Okay. Anybody else questions? All right. Thank you very much.
Moving on now to the Water Committee report. Director Rain Sosa. Okay. Yes, and um, it's actually the Water Conservation Committee. It's technically correct, and that's important because right now we are in a very serious water condition. Uh, as shortly after our last Water Committee meeting, as was reported at the last board meeting, it was declared a water emergency. And although, yes, we got some wonderful rain last week, probably more than we even wanted at the same time, uh, that really hasn't alleviated things very much. The um, El Toro Water District recently held a community advisor group attended by several Laguna Wood residents from both um, Third and United. It was good to see everybody there. And they again presented this mm -hmm. dire picture. So we all do have to conserve. The state is planning. They state that their allotment to us from the north will most likely, they call it zero this year, this coming year. But zero really means we will only have, in their terms, they'll only supply us with enough water to be sustainable for basic needs. We don't have storage down here, and so we have to get it from elsewhere. Everyone is working hard, and um, we've had lots of invitations to speak at various groups in the community and have been pleased to do that. And I'm pleased to report that our Tier 4 excessive water use in Third Mutual has dropped from 44 meters at its height during the summer. And remember that our residential meters do not reflect landscaping water. So that's residential use only. So summer didn't mean people were watering lawns, hopefully not. Um, and it from a height of 44 meters, meters not units, because some meters serve many, many units, but 44 meters to our last report at the end of October was only 16 meters. We hope that means lots of leaks are getting fixed. Please, if you see them, get them fixed. If you don't see them, you don't observe them, but you get a tier four bill that says there's excessive use, please let maintenance and construction in to see if they can find a leak somewhere. And uh, there are low flow shower heads available from El Toro Water District, which we will place with resident services for people to pick up at no charge. And we urge you to test your tank, your toilet tank, with either blue dye tablets also available at resident services at no charge or food coloring. And you put the dye in the tank of the toilet and you don't flush it, you just put the dye in the tank and wait. And if the water in the toilet bowl turns blue, it means there's a leak from the tank to the toilet. That's that little flapper, a very inexpensive repair, a very simple repair, and can save thousands of gallons of water. So thank you all for what I hope is great diligence in bringing that excessive use numbers down. And we will continue to report. I do want to tell you we have an advisor now to the Water Conservation Committee. We will welcome him at our next meeting on uh, January the 27th. And uh, we look forward to seeing some of you there as well. We really appreciate having residents attend. And that's it. Thank you, Director Rain Sosak. A uh, couple of quick points that I should mention and I forgot to. One is that for all the advisors, if you're the chair of a committee, it's your responsibility to make sure that uh, the proper individuals who support the committee, the staff, know who your advisors are with their emails so that they can be put on the email list and receive the appropriate emails for, the, for your committee. That's number one. Number two, uh, Steve Hormuth from the finance office uh, was monitoring uh, what's going on, and he sent a response, Director Lewis, as to what that 44% breakdown is. And I'm not, don't mean to steal your thunder, Director Rain Sosak, but according to uh, uh, Mr. Hormuth, $239,690 were permit fees, inspection fees were $93,608, and chargeable services, $261,432 for a total of $594,730, which is the 44% of the 1,340,000. So that's at least a, a partial answer for what you were looking for. No, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, President Lustig, and thank you, Steve Hormuth. <laughs> yeah, for, for an action. So thank you. All right. Uh, last report from the third mutual before we go into the GRF committee reports is the Resident Policy and Compliance Committee. This committee met on Wednesday, November 23rd. Since the committee had not met in a while, 
There were no holdover items for any kind of action by the committee. The committee therefore used the meeting time to discuss possible issues that might require future action. And two that I want to bring to your attention. Number one is the lease cap. Uh, the committee is considering lowering the lease cap from the current 30% to the state minimum of 25%. Back in April of 2020, Third Mutual, with resolution 03-20-26, adopted a policy that creates a wait list if leases were at 30%. We were then, at the time we were discussing this, somewhere about 28 point something percent. In January of 2021, legislation went into effect that requires a minimum of 25% of manors be eligible for lease should members want to lease their manners. The committee is considering, after considerable discussion, uh, that they'll take up the formal approach to this at its next meeting. But what we're looking at possibly doing is adapting the lease policy, uh, if it reached a 30%, apply it to how we would handle it if we're at 25% and use attrition to get down to the 25%. So anybody who is currently leasing would not be negatively impacted by the new policy if, we, if the committee is able to agree and if the board is able to support a policy of that nature. The second item that the uh, committee considered was lease renewal. Discussion ensued about having a type of, I'm using, this is my term, not the committee's term, a fast track lease renewal for members who have tenants in good standing. Currently, full lease authorization application requires landlords and tenants to complete a fairly lengthy and detailed process to renew an existing tenant that they're satisfied with and that we have no problems with from a compliance standpoint. Uh, the committee is considering an abbreviated process that will make life easier for members who have these tenants that are in good standing and want to renew a lease. One of the elements that constitutes good standing from third's perspective is that they have not been involved in any violations of third policies. Uh, the committee again will be taking a much more in-depth look at this uh, proposed policy to address the issue and that'll come up again also at the next meeting. And the next meeting of that committee for any members who are interested in attending or uh, contributing to the discussion is Tuesday, December 28th at 9.30 and it'll be here in the boardroom. All right, we now move to GRF committee highlights and we will start with Director McCarry on the Community Activities Committee. Thank you, um, President Muchnick. The uh, Community Activities Committee met on uh, December 9th here in the boardroom. It was a hybrid meeting. Um, there was some discussion regarding the use of the court system. There seems to still be some dissatisfaction amongst the members um, about the use of the court system, so the committee did hear those, um, those complaints from the committee. Also, it was uh, noted um, that the new uh, GRF-approved uh, Revenue Generating Committee will now become a standing committee. And uh, as of right now, Director Bada and myself are on that committee. So um, it, it was started out as an ad hoc, so now it is uh, a standing committee. There was uh, staff also submitted a report on the online reservation disciplinary protocol because it's been reported that some of the people uh, since the introduction of an online reservation system, there is a, a certain percentage of residents that are manipulating the reservation system. And so staff has submitted uh, some recommendations for disciplinary action for, for residents who are manipulating and abusing the online system. Um, Miss, uh, there was also Brian Gruner submitted to the committee a um, proposal for uh, operating the pools for uh, the winter. He, he submitted a proposal for alternative win winter hours, summer hours, um, and for pool one, pool two, pool four, pool five, and pool six. Um, of note is that for Pool six, the recommended proposal is from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m., there be no lifeguard. And so this, uh, a lot of discussion was ensued with that. And so this is now gonna go to the GRF committee for uh, some approval or some recommendation. Um, 
that was it. Um, the next meeting is scheduled for uh, January 13th at 1.30 p.m., and it will be a hybrid meeting as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up is the Equestrian Center Ad Hoc Committee, Director Bada. No, thank you. The GRF, uh, Equestrian and, sorry, the Equestrian Center Ad Hoc Committee uh, meeting was last held on November 4th, uh, 2022. A long report was uh, given at that time in at the November's board meeting. Our next meeting will be in January, on January 26th, 2022, at 1 p.m. as a virtual meeting. Thank you. Sure. Next up is the GRF Finance Committee, Director Rain Sotsak. Thank you. And the GRF Finance Committee meeting reported that GRF was better than budget, and theirs was November 30th, as opposed to ours being October 31st, because we met later on the GRF committee, was better than budget by $2,830,000. Um, that was primarily savings in compensation, which really came from open positions. So that is something that will most likely not be realized in the future. And there were some expenses beyond what had been anticipated in utilities and just as in third that was related to water for the golf courses etc due to lower water and lower rain during the summer and that's the summary of the grf finance committee report. next meeting of the grf finance committee is february 16th uh, 2022 at 1 30 in the boardroom and also be virtual all right next up is the grf landscape committee director lewis Okay, so at the GRF landscape meeting, uh, there was an update on the clearing out, uh, which is now uh, a regular item, of the cattails in the creek, uh, which is also moving along better since they've been doing it more regularly. And uh, the processes have been ironed out as they require a biologist and all sorts of other uh, state requirements need to be met, but it is uh, moving faster, better, and, and uh, residents are applauding the effort because then the water doesn't remain stagnant and uh, cause some other issues. So there was also a video uh, presented by a uh, landscape uh, uh, member, uh, Manny Tafoya, who is uh, a very enthusiastic employee, I must say, um, um, basically giving an overview of uh, what goes on in landscaping and um, so on. And uh, to me, the highlight of uh, the meeting was uh, the approval of the purchase of the weather track uh, irrigation controller system by GRF. Uh, what that means to, to the community. And, and third, um, this upgrade will save us water um, by just the type of changes it will uh, encompass. Uh, one of them being instead of uh, the singular uh, weather station we have for the entire village. Uh, this breaks it down into half mile increments so we can have uh, microclimate um, uh, adjustments in the uh, irrigation system. It also uh, uh, gives us the ability, if a uh, third so chooses, to add flow meters to further reduce water usage uh, uh, and detect leaks um, and the, the ability to create uh, uh, tighter landscape water usage budgets if we can want to go that in direction. So, and uh, I think the next meeting is uh, February 9th, 1.30 in the boardroom. And that's also a hybrid meeting. Thank uh, you. Yes. All right. Next up, GRF Maintenance and Construction Committee, Director Engdahl. Uh, thank you. The, the uh, last meeting that the GRF Maintenance and Construction had was uh, December 8th. We had an extremely interesting slide presentation on uh, hydrogen as an energy source uh, put together by the National Fuel Cell Research Center, which I think was, as I understand, was centered at UCI. Um, we had uh, some other discussions on architectural consultant possibility for a uh, contract for building E, um, discussed the matter of and condition of problems regarding benches along sidewalks. Apparently people are bumping into them and 
break in when, and some people are uh, tripping over them. So that's that's a continuing problem that's going to have to be addressed by third and and uh, GRF together. These are the sidewalks are GRF maintenance and uh, there's a there's a problem with some of them. Uh, people seem to stumble into them a little bit. Um, let's see. Is also uh, also discussed briefly was reconfiguration of the workstations and the resident service area. Uh, the next meeting is scheduled for February nine. Uh, there was some attempt to try to get it scheduled a little earlier, but uh, I've not heard anything else on that. So, thank okay. you. Thank you. Do you now want to give us an update on clubhouse facility renovation ad hoc committee? Okay, we'll continue with continuing with that. Um, the we had the last meeting was on uh, November 29th, and we briefly discussed renovation of the pack kitchens and rehearsal room and billiards room, and uh, also a, a proposal for the vendor who had done the previous work on the pack, and I think that's been approved as a single source vendor at this point because of the experience with them. Uh, also mentioned some sound problems in smaller meeting rooms in Clubhouse 2. Most of the time of that meeting was discussing Clubhouse 1 activities. Uh, the emphasis has been on beautification of the facility as uh, kind of opposed to some of the some, uh, seismic uh, so, is that the right word, seismic earthquake uh, retrofit of, to the frustration of some of the retires engineers on the community, on the committee. Uh, we just, the staff did discuss a report of a preliminary meeting with one of the window installers just to kind of see what's available and so forth. Uh, a few other items we talked on, uh, functional features such as the sewers and also the sound systems in some of the rooms. Uh, next meeting and date and time is yet to be determined. Okie doke. Thank you. Meeting Communications Committee, Director McCarry. Thank you, President uh, Munchnick. The Meeting and Communications Committee meeting for January was canceled. However, I just want to remind uh, everybody that the December, January issue of the Village Breeze um, is out and it has been distributed. And um, of note, uh, everything is of note, but specifically, I want to call your attention to uh, page not nine, which talks about the um, uh, NBC Sports and the ESPN Classic channels that are ceasing to be in operation. So there's a lot of information here about, about those channels. So, and they cease operation January 1st. So it's really a good uh, informative piece about uh, what to expect come January 1st when you turn on your TV and you won't be able to get those ESPN sports channel. There's also some really good articles about how to recognize certain types of scams and stuff and how sometimes people unbeknownst can be victims of phishing scams and stuff. So really a lot of good articles in, in this edition. So um, please feel free to look through that. If for some reason you don't have a copy of The Breeze, you can at, at the concierge desk up front, ask them and they'd be happy to get a copy for you. Thank you. And the next communication meeting is scheduled for January 17th at 1.30 p.m. here in the boardroom as a virtual hybrid meeting. Thank you. Next up is Mobility and Vehicles Committee, Director Bottom. Okay. Again. <laughs> All right. So actually, there is nothing new to be announced. Uh, the bus system. Uh, is your mic on? It is now. Thank you. Uh, currently, there is nothing new to announce. The bus transportation system was revisited and consists of the Easy Rider uh, or the fixed route service, the Journey program, which provides curb to curb uh, transportation for pre approved residents with medical needs, uh, Boost, which is the on-demand rides or uh, ride shares is a ride share service, uh, which is a contractual partnership service with Lyft. Uh, mind you, it is L-Y-F-T, there's no Lyft, free Lyft over here. 
The next meeting is on Friday, 20, uh, Friday, February 2nd, 2022 at 1.30 p.m. in the boardroom. Uh, another part of the announcement would be Director Langenauer, who was the uh, Mobility and Vehicles uh, Department uh, Chair, uh, Director, has now retired and a new one has been appointed and will start sometime in January. Is that correct, Shawan? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Security and Community Access Committee, Director McCarry. Thank you, President Lester. The Security and Community Access Committee did not meet this month. The next meeting is scheduled for February. I lost my place here. Uh, scheduled. Thank you. Uh. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Next yeah. up, Disaster Preparedness Task Force, Director Rain Sotsak. Disaster Preparedness Task Force at their recent meeting talked primarily about um, the October Earthquake Awareness Day when we had our California shakeout and several systems were tried at the time, most doing fairly well, but we're always trying to be prepared. And they are really looking at reinstituting training sessions for block captains, building captains, et cetera, people who will help out in emergency. And that is a committee that meets quarterly. Okay, thank you. And the next meeting is January 25th, 2022 at 9.30 a.m. in the boardroom and also as a virtual meeting. So thank you. Next up, report of the Laguna Woods Village traffic hearings. Director Franco. The meeting was held uh, last week and there were two violators. Uh, one found guilty and the other one, the the. The video was not available to be seen, so it was postponed. The uh, next meeting is January 19th. Thank you. Next up, GRF Strategic Planning and Ad Hoc Committee. As I've reported the last few months, there has been no meeting of this committee, but I am told that there will be a meeting in January, but I don't know the specific date as of yet. And I'm going to insert, after the Strategic Planning Committee and before we get to the Trash Task Force, we're going to insert the ITAC which was somehow left off of this, and Director Laws, because I figured Director uh, Wayne, the trash is kind of bringing up the rear in terms of meeting, committee reports. Okay, so Director Laws, please, ITAC. Yeah, the ITAC uh, team meets um, every Friday afternoon uh, when they can, when there's not holidays, uh, made up of uh, information technology, ex-information technology professionals and the uh, GRF, United, and Third Boards. Um, there are three packages that the committee as well as the key staff members have taken a look at, and we're now in the process of reviewing the results of those demos, um, getting some surveys out to the people that attended those demos and understanding what they liked, what they didn't like, looking at the costs of each of those three packages and trying to put together a presentation that we can then, this, the ITAC team can bring to all the boards to tell them what's going on and uh, get their confirmation that we're doing the right thing. Okay, thank you. And last but not least, Trash Task Force Director Wayne. Yes, I will talk trash again today. Well, so basically, oh, John has a question. Oh, Director Franco. Uh, do you, who do you want to attend uh, tomorrow's trash meeting at Town Hall? Director Wayne and I'm No, 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 no. Director Laws is attending with me. I already announced that earlier today. It's Director Laws. Okay. What about Director Wayne? He's the. Uh, he comes and sits in the back. He's the committee chairman. No, but he comes and sits in the back. He's there. So. Do you want three people up sure. front tomorrow? Three, you, How about uh, Director Frankel joining you? No, I, I don't want that many board members there. It's, so oh. Director Laws is going to be there, and hopefully you'll be in the back. Okay, I will be in the back. Thank you. Okay. All right, talk trash for us, please. Yeah, I will be in the rear. Yes. <laughs> he, he said that. Okay. <clears throat> so basically... At this point in time, we know that January 1st is the date in which we are going to start this program. We know that the current bins will be removed and new bins will be 
will, will be added by CCDR. Uh, they will be done on a periodic basis because they can't do them all at one time. So they are going to be leasing them from waste management until they can actually replace them. Uh, cleanup in the bins area uh, is a job for MNC, maintenance and construction. It's not something that will take place by the trash companies. Um, if everybody was going to have a bin, it would be an additional $73,000 a year. So obviously we are trying to save money every way we can, so we are not putting bins at every resident. We will be going over the location of the bins in short order. What doesn't go in the, in the bins for this project is a little strange. Um, since this is supposed to be what's going to be, um, what was the word, aromatically disposed of, whatever that means, it means composting. Um, what's not going to go in the bins is something like bones. So I thought that chicken bones would be something that would be going in there. No, they will go in your regular trash. Also, dog and cat waste will go in your regular trash, not in the recycle. So that's the update. We'll have more news tomorrow and more at the next meeting. At the town hall. Thank you. All right, that concludes the committee reports. Uh, future agenda items. Anybody? Items for the future agenda at this point? Hearing none, we'll now go to director comments. We'll start with the two people on Zoom. We'll go with ladies first. Director Rain Sosak, final comments? No, thank you, except to wish everybody a very happy holiday and a healthy and happy new year. Thank you. Director Cook? No comment. All right. Then I'll start on my far left. Director Lewis? I have no further comments except for uh, happy holidays. Director Laws? Yeah, I have a question and a comment or two. Um, last board meeting, we agreed upon a collection and lien enforcement policy after a package was put together that was mailed to us. So what was mailed to us did not have some wording in it that we had requested. And I was just wanting to understand what the status of getting the updated wording out to everybody is. So I'll let VMS uh, talk to that when they have their comments. Um, when, I was, uh, when I became board member in October, I was asked by staff to get a headshot done for the community center wall and the website. Um, uh, I was asked by staff to request an appointment with a uh, specific portrait studio in Irvine. I went to that website of that portrait studio and it looked like the headshots uh, were gonna cost uh, over $150. And uh, my face isn't worth that much money, so I thought we could come up with a less expensive solution. So um, I sent a headshot to staff that my wife had took of me um, and was told that that was a bit too grainy and, and wouldn't uh, resolve very well once enlarged. So I reached out to the Laguna Woods Camera Club and uh, they were able to take a headshot of me. It's now up on the community center wall if you want to take a look. And it cost uh, only $25 for their time and equipment. and. Uh, the Laguna Woods Camera Club would be happy to continue to take headshots going forward if that's something that uh, uh, is appropriate. And I request that staff take a look at uh, having them or, or some other less expensive option for um, our headshots. Um, and that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Director Franco. Uh, no comment. Thank you. Okay. Director Engdahl. No further comments. Thank you. Merry Christmas. All right, thank you. Director McCary. Thank you. I just want to say uh, happy holidays to everyone, and hopefully uh, we can all remain safe and healthy through the remainder of this year. Thank you. Director Jarrett. I have several things to say. I'm a slow on the draw this morning. 
Uh, first of all, uh, when Joe got up, he wanted each one of us to say something, and, and I didn't. But uh, he, he uh, sent me a private message last night about the insurance, and I sent him a private message back. Uh, and what I didn't, what I don't see with all these people complaining about the insurance, uh, they don't talk about um, Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae now is really looking hard at communities uh, like this. Um, if we don't have adequate insurance, we will no longer be able to, uh, people won't be able to refinance their loans, and they won't get loans in there. It will be just like United. That's what's going to happen if we don't have adequate insurance. That's one of the things I let him know last night. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, reverse mortgages. If you remember, there was like one meeting or two meetings ago when we were in a meeting, and Catherine freshly uh, told us why we weren't getting reverse mortgages, because there's a government law about not allowing us to get reverse mortgages. So I'm going to reach out to Peter uh, Stenstrom, as you can see, he already left today, <clears throat> and he lives very close by. I'm going to let him know that that's why he can't get it work. But I, I really don't know why I'm, and where, where that rule comes from. But, you know, I trust Catherine that she's correct. But I'd just like to know where that comes from when people ask us, we know as board members, what the answer is. The other thing I wanted to say, Mark, I wasn't fast enough on the draw this morning about your question on the landscape going on to consent calendar. And the, the reason is we get a lot of these requests. And they come onto the consent calendar, <clears throat> and in if they are denied, Bless you. Uh, we, we, get, you. we notify people from the landscape committee when they have denial, uh, they get sent a letter by the admin to tell them it's denied and they can appeal their decision. And they can come to the next board meeting to appeal that decision, and then um, they can get up and talk. So that one, that kind of thing, will not be on the consent calendar, but if it shows up on there and the people come to the meeting, we take it off the consent calendar, so we give them a chance for an appeal. So that's one important thing I wanted to let you know, because that was a good question you had. So anyway, with that, I wish everybody happy holidays. Thank you. Director Bada. Uh, thank you. Um, number one, I want to congratulate Shavan again, and... Uh, Wish her all the best in her new position. Uh, Director Cook, I'm envious of your location. It looks like you are having a great time in that sunny wherever you are. <laughs> um, uh, happy holidays to everybody, uh, including all the residents, the staff, and uh, my cohorts over here uh, on the board. Do have a great time. And please be safe. And uh, hope to see you again at the next board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Director Wayne. I have a question for Director Laws. Would the picture that they have on the wall at the post office not have sufficed? <laughs> <laughs> that was too grainy, too? OK. A little humor is added here. No other comments. All right. Uh, <laughs> CEO Parker. Just want to wish everybody a safe and happy holidays. Soon to be CEO Foster. I just wanted to address the headshot question. We have negotiated a much lower price than what is shown on the website. However, with that being said, we will take a look and see what the best option is. Thank you. OK. Grant, comment? No further comments. Thank you. And Cindy. Cindy. Just have a uh, safe and happy holiday for everybody. Thank you. And I will wish everyone, all members in the community, uh, both Third United, the Towers, as well uh, as all staff and fellow board members, uh, happy and safe holiday season. And at that, we will recess and uh, reconvene for the closed board meeting. Thank you.